So, thank you for attending, and I'm happy that we have uh, this research tonight. Um, and I want to reiterate something that Dino said with, um, you don't necessarily know what you're getting into in terms of the project, but once you start on a role, um, you really want to find out more about it and, and kind of the inner workings. And that certainly happened with me with um, HCCAs. I can't say that I, I ever expected um, to be so interested in it, but um, it turns out uh, that happens in life. <laughs> so, protein science, uh, I'm talking about HCCAs like you know what it is. Um, it's a protein, uh, also an enzyme. So it's a protein that catalyzes a uh, chemical reaction. Um, so, in general, why do we care about protein science? Um, and Professor Hall has talked about proteins as doing a lot of the work in the cells, um, the workforces of, of cells, I suppose. Majority of targets to develop small molecule drugs uh, for the cure prevention of disease states are proteins, so the targets. Uh, pharmaceuticals are shifting from small molecules to include protein like drugs. Um, and in the scope of biology, at least, uh, protein science of human disease states is relatively unexplored. Um, the Human Genome Project wasn't uh, completed um, about maybe a decade ago. So we didn't have the genetic information for humans to then be able to use the DNA to then go to um, protein. And we're learning a lot more um, about, about human um, protein enzymes. So ATCase. Uh, the long version of this word is aspartate trans carboylase. Right? So uh, the catalysis uh, that this enzyme performs um, is universal across all species. Uh, we have carboyl phosphate or CP um, and L-aspartate, so the amino acid. Uh, and we have attack of terminal carbon, we can form a tetrahedral intermediate, and then collapse of the oxyanion now releases um, inorganic phosphate and carbamyl aspartate, or CA. Uh, CA turns out um, in downstream processes to be uh, the nitrogenous ring uh, in CTP and UTP, which um, is, is involved in uh, uh, DNA, replication of DNA. They're the purines, um, and that's uh, the other path that would be pure, the purine pathway, um, synthesizing ATP and GTP. So it's important to have a balanced pool of nucleotides uh, in the replication of DNA and, and um, propagation of cells. So E. coli, uh, probably right, the most famous organism for biology and genetics, um, we know a lot about its genetics, it's a very small uh, bacterium. And so HCC is beyond the central duct of biology, right? So Professor Hall was, like, was perfect, right? So DNA <laughs> transcription to mRNA, and then we have mRNA translation to a polypeptide protein. Um, the polypeptide protein folds based on that amino acid sequence. Right? And then that folded structure determines its function. And uh, what's really interesting about ATCH from E. coli um, turns out that it has two states. Okay? We know a lot of structural information about ATCH. Uh, it's been studied for 35 years. Um, and so this is a movie that was generated um, from crystal structures of the enzyme. Okay? So we have, it's very large. I put the, I put the molecular weight down there because uh, just an idea of how many atoms <laughs> we're talking about. Okay, so it's a cartoon representation. Um, we have uh, red subunits, three of them um, on top, and the replicated three on the bottom. We have two other sub, another subunit um, that has a dimer, and there's three dimers. Okay, so it's worth 12 polypeptide chains, uh, and six being of one type, and six being of another type. Uh, to regulate uh, CTP and UTP production, CTP and UTP bind um, to the enzyme and affect the rate of catalysis. Okay. So we have the same peptide sequence, we have the same subunits, however now we have a two-state system, right? So it's folded, but um, they have different conformations. And we know this from crystal structures and uh, kinetic assays. So 
Here we have what we call a T-state or uh, inactive state. Uh, it's low reaction rate. Uh, and the equilibrium, there's an equilibrium between these two states in solution. The faster reaction rate is in our state, so it's an expansion um, of the top catalytic chains um, across this, this dimension here. So in case one where we have reactants, uh, C, C, um, Cp and aspartate, then the equilibrium is going to shift towards the active state, uh, so that we can turn over and make Ctp eventually. Uh, when we have purines, ATP, the parallel uh, pathway, that is going to shift the equilibrium to the R state so that we can make more CTP and UTP to keep the balance of, of um, nucleotides. In case three, pyrimidines, now too much pyrimidine concentration, we're going back um, to the T state uh, for the equilibrium so that we can inhibit the synthesis of more CTP to keep the balance um, equal. So I'm thinking about lab work, right? So uh, what would be to rational, uh, rationally mutate um, so that we have different amino acids in the enzyme? We have a lot of structural information, so it's a rational design. And we use molecular biology techniques for this, um, so PCR um, as one. And what else do we need? Consequence of mutations on the function of the enzyme. So how would we determine the consequences? Um, enzymatic assays, so we can look at um, kinetic profile. Um, also, what consequence of mutations on the structure? Uh, so a lot of that work um, would be done using X-ray diffraction, um, and that can be that's outsourced um, and uh, Brookhaven and also at Lab in Berkeley um, can do those. Those a uh, lot of lot of equipment <laughs> you needed for that. So also for lab, I was thinking about uh, the lab culture. Uh, so I like streaming Pandora, streaming um, WRS out of Boston. Um, so you get the whole thumbs up thing, I'm not going to do each one. Uh, being constructive, uh, so Kristen could attest to, uh, we've made a shoebox light blocking assay um, equipment. So also um, making strip PCR tubes, these little tiny tubes that needs to be in strips we have so we start taking them together. So this is kind of the stuff that we do on the day to day um, and that I enjoy doing and, and Kristen I think um, as well. Uh, delicious beverages, uh, personally I like iced chai. Um, that was also uh, part of lab culture, at least for me. Physical exercise, firstly yoga. Um, you know, it's not everyone's thing, but. <laughs> computers, uh, firstly Mac. We use a lot of computer, computer software uh, in designing um, primers or, or in the. Uh, conversing about breaking bad. Uh, personally, conversing about breaking bad. <laughs> Um, and so overall, we're, we're seeking to understand the atomic levels um, of regulation for this enzyme. Uh, here's our, our uh, regulatory subunits as a dimer, and I blew it up here. What's interesting um, is these hydrophobic amino acids. Uh, you can't see them because this is a ribbon diagram, so it's a really simplified version of all the atoms. Um, but this, this region here is of, of great interest um, and somehow is, is working. Uh, with the enzyme and its regulation. <laughs> so we have questions. Um, I love questions. Uh, Kristen, I had the, the pleasure of working with her over the summer, um, and she's continuing with me um, in the lab this semester and next semester, and she can um, attest to a lot of things that I've mentioned. And then, uh, of course, we'll be solving questions too as well. Um, so I think you're very attentive.